Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to our very last lesson, lesson 6.10, Algebra, Use Properties of Addition. Our essential question is how can properties help you add fractions with unlike denominators? Let's begin on lesson 6.10. Let's take a look at question 2. Now with question 2, I can see that I have 8 and 1 fifth plus parentheses 4 and 2 fifths plus 3 and 3 tenths. Now I know the associative property tells me that I can take these two parentheses right here and I can regroup. Remember, whenever you add different numbers, it doesn't matter how you group them, you're still going to get the same sum. So we can actually rewrite this question to be 8 and 1 fifth plus 4 and 2 fifths, and I want to group my fifths together. That way I can add fractions with the same denominator. Once I get this answer, then I can add my 3 and 3 tenths. So what I did was I just took my parentheses from here and I changed it to here and grouped my fifths. So now let's go ahead and work this out. I have 8 and 1 fifth plus 4 and 2 fifths. So if I add this up together, I will have 12 and 3 fifths plus 3 and 3 tenths. Now I have my equation much easier to answer. And now we can just answer like we did in our pre previous lessons. We're going to add with different denominators. So let's go ahead and rewrite 12 and 3 fifths plus 3 and 3 tenths. Now I can see I have different denominators. Let's make them the same. I'm going to make them both tenths. Now this one can stay the same, 3 tenths. 3 fifths would equal 6 tenths. And now we can add 6 tenths plus 3 tenths is 9 tenths, which is already simplified, and 12 wholes plus 3 wholes is 15 wholes. So the final sum should be 15 and 9 tenths. Let's take a look at question number 4. I have 2 and 1 tenths plus 1 and 2 sevenths plus 4 and 9 tenths. Now, it doesn't matter how you group your numbers in an addition sentence because with the associative property it doesn't matter how you group. So I'm going to go ahead and regroup and put inside the parentheses the numbers that have the same denominator as 10. So this is like the commutative property. I'm going to switch these two around. Remember with commutative property it doesn't matter the order of your add-ins. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this and I'm going to start out by writing 1 and 2 sevenths plus parentheses 2 and 1 tenth plus 4 and 9 tenths. So if you look, all I did was put inside the parentheses my fractions with tenths as the denominator. And now remember, with order of operations, you always do what is inside the parentheses first. So 2 and 1 tenths plus 4 and 9 tenths would equal 6 and 10 tenths, which also equals 7 wholes. So now I'm just going to rewrite this question to be 1 and 2 sevenths plus 7 wholes. And that's an easy addition sentence now. 8 wholes and 2 sevenths should be the final sum. So let's take a look together at question number 6. If you look at 1 and 1 fourth, 3 and 2 thirds, 5 and 3 fourths, which two would you group together? to put into parentheses. You would want to put together the ones with the same denominator. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as 1 and 1 fourth plus 5 and 3 fourths. We're going to group those together. That's using the commutative property because you're switching your add-ins around. And also it's a form of the associative property because you're grouping different add-ins. All right, so now we have 1 and 1 fourth plus 5 and 3 fourths plus 3 and 2 thirds. Now we can go ahead and add. Let's add what's in parentheses first because that's order of operations. So 1 and 1 fourth plus 5 and 3 fourths would be 4 fourths would be your fraction and 6 wholes, which becomes 7 wholes. 7 wholes plus 3 and 2 thirds. What do you think it is? You should say it's 10 and 2 thirds. 
And of course, we know that 2 thirds is already simplified because 2 and 3 are consecutive numbers. All right, let's move on. All right, let's take a look at number 8. I want you to go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own to see if you can do it all by yourself without my guidance. And then we'll check it together. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, for this one, you're going to use the associative property because you're going to leave the add-ins in the same order for this one. You didn't have to switch them around. However, we are going to move the parentheses over here. Therefore, they were around these two, but we're going to move them around the first two add-ins. That's called the associative property because you're moving your parentheses and grouping different add-ins. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add our 3 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 1 fourth because you wanted to keep your fourths together. All right, so 3 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 1 fourth equals 6 wholes and 2 fourths, also known as 6 and a half, plus 5 and 1 fifth. Now my denominators are different, so I need to go ahead and find common denominators for a common denominator for 4 and 5. Now I don't like it written horizontally when I like to find common denominators so I'm just going to rewrite it over here 6 and 2 fourths plus 5 and 1 fifth and my first common denominator that will appear you should have said is 20 because you count your multiples of 4 and you get 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and for 5 you get 5, 10, 15, 20. So I'm going to put 20 right there as my common denominator. All right, 5 times 4 is 20, so 1 times 4 is 4, so 1 fifth is the same as 4 twentieths. 4 times 5 is 20, so 2 times 5 is 10. You should have 10 twentieths is equivalent to 2 fourths. Now we can add 10 twentieths plus 4 twentieths is 14 twentieths. And add up your holes, 6 plus 5 is 11. Now we can simplify 14 twentieths, and the reason why I know is because these are both even numbers. So I know I can divide my numerator and denominator both by 2. So 11 holes, and let's simplify this to 7 tenths. That's our final answer. I hope you got the same one that I did. All right, let's read this word problem. It says, Elizabeth rode her bike six and a half miles from her house to the library, and then another two and two-fifths miles to her friend Milo's house. If Carson's house is two and a half miles beyond Milo's house, how far would she travel from her house to Carson's house? So remember, Elizabeth goes, from her house, I'll just put E for Elizabeth, to the library, and then to her friend Milo's house. If Carson's house is two and a half miles beyond Milo's house, how far would she have traveled from her house to Carson's house? So it would be six and a half miles to the library and two and two-fifths miles to Milo's house. All right, so in other words, our goal is to add these three together to get the final answer. So let's go ahead and set it up. Now I'm going to go ahead, because it's a word problem, I can go ahead and group already what I want to put together in my parentheses. So I'm going to glance, because of the commutative property, you could put them in any order you want. I'm going to put the two and a half and the six and a half inside parentheses, because that'll save me a step in the long run. 2 and a half plus 6 and 1 half, and then we can add the extra 2 and 2 fifths. All right, so let's go ahead and add up what's in our parentheses. All right, 2 and 1 half plus 6 and 1 half is going to be, let's do a half plus a half is a whole, so that would be 1 whole, plus 2 wholes plus 6 wholes would be 9 wholes, because 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 1 more is 9. So we have 9 plus 2 and 2 fifths. All right, so our final answer should be 11 and 2 fifths. I hope that makes sense. Okay, this number 11 is going to be the last one we do together before you do your homework questions on the back side. And this one is a little trickier, so I would like to do it with you, unless you really feel confident and you can work ahead of me. 
All right, this says Hassan made a vegetable salad with two and three eighths pounds of tomatoes, one and one fourth pounds of asparagus, and two and seven eighths pounds of potatoes. How many pounds of vegetables did he use altogether? Now there's two things you can do here. You can either go ahead and just change this to an equivalent fraction that has an eight as your denominator, all right? Or you can just go ahead and group and add these first and then add one and one fourth later as well. If you'd like to go ahead and just change this, it would make it a lot easier, I believe, because then you're going to have every one with an eight as your denominator. So let's go ahead and just quickly change one and one fourth to how many eighths? Well, I know four times two is eight, so one times two is two. So it's going to be one and two eighths. So now we can just go ahead and call this one and two eighths. And so now we can go ahead and add up all of our add-ins to find out how much vegetables he used all together. All right, so it doesn't really matter where you put them or which ones you group, but I would prefer to just group them right in order. So we have two and three eighths plus one and two eighths, because remember, we change this to one and two eighths. And I'm gonna group those together first. And then we can add on the two and seven eighths. All right, let's go ahead and add this first one in parentheses together. If I have three eighths plus two eighths, I know that equals five eighths. So we'd have three holes and five eighths. Plus our two holes and seven eighths. All right, let's go ahead and add it up. Five eighths plus seven eighths is 12 eighths. And three holes plus two holes is five holes. Now if you look at this, you can see that 12 eighths is an, is an improper fraction, or a fracture great, fraction greater than one whole. So we want to rename our 12 eighths to be one whole. Remember, 12 eighths can be changed to a mixed number, one whole and four eighths, also known as one half. Because eight can go into 12, one whole time, four is left over, and your eight stays the same as your denominator. So this right here is really one whole and four eighths. So let's go ahead and call this six holes and four eighths, also known as six and one half. I know this was a lot of steps to do, but I hope you understood it. Okay, here are your homework questions on the back side of your homework page. Please go ahead and do questions one and two, which are just like your homework for what we practiced tonight, and then do questions three through six all by yourself for review problems. Don't forget to assess yourself at the top of the page. One is a novice, two is apprentice, three for practitioner, four for expert. And here are your two questions again. Please work with them out very carefully. If you can't remember how to do it, you can go back and rewatch the video to make sure you understand. All right, we'll practice some more tomorrow in class. Have a great night.